There are still 15 countries in the world that have so-called diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Most of the countries also receive financial support from Taiwan. Facing shrinking international space, Taiwan's Democratic Progressive Party tries to make more unofficial diplomacy possible, especially more support from the U.S. to back Taiwan's independence. I'm Dr. Chiao. This is Chiao Talks. As a province of China, Taiwan is not entitled for special international status as a state. The U.S. government made promises to reduce arms sales to Taiwan. But over the years, a number of top U.S. think tanks continuously accept the money from Taiwan. Why are the think tanks doing that? The American Prospect reports in a recent article that some top U.S. think tanks, mostly based in Washington, D.C., have been accepting high-level funding resources from Taipei Economic and the Cultural Representative Office for years. The five think tanks, the Brookings Institution, the Center for American Progress, the Center for New American Security, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, and the Hudson Institute, all disclosed their funding from TACRO, but buried deep on their websites or any reports. TACRO is a diplomatic branch of the government of Taiwan. The Brookings Institute accepted half a million U.S. dollars in 2019 from TACRO. In return, TACRO officials have been regular guests at the Brookings events. What do the think tanks take money for? By accepting millions of U.S. dollars to fund their research, these think tanks lobby for Taiwan's separationist schemes. They advocate for bipartisan support for Taiwan's independence from China. They claim that Taiwan is going to be invaded by the Chinese mainland. Taiwan is about to be destroyed by nuclear weapons. The Chinese mainland always acts on the consensus of both sides of the Taiwan Strait in pursuit of peace and stability. In 2019, the volume of trade between Taiwan and the mainland surpassed 2 trillion US dollars, and 9 million trips were made across the straits. Different systems are not an obstacle to unity, nor an excuse for division. The mainland is committed to economic integration. The DPP keeps denying the consensus and agitating for separation. In October 2017, Tsai Ing-wen hosted delegates from Hudson Institute in Taiwan. During their meeting, Tsai emphasized that Taiwan must promote its military capability for self-defense by deepening its ties with the U.S. Taiwan very much needs to strengthen its self-defense capability. My most important role is to strengthen our military capability. So, we are continuing to expand our military capability. The message was delivered. The message was delivered. By the delegates to members of the U.S. government. They advise the U.S. government to sell more advanced weapons to Taiwan. All these policy suggestions the think tanks issued do not promote a peaceful and constructive relationship between Taiwan and the mainland. They call for more arms sales, upgrades of Taiwan's weaponry, and they picture China as a global enemy of the U.S. The Project 2049 Institute, funded by former U.S. senior officials, continuously accepted large amounts of money from the DPP. They openly call for strengthening U.S.-Japan-Taiwan cooperation of security. And recently, we have welcomed the inclusion of Japan, making this truly a framework for regional partners to promote our shared values and interests. The think tanks know that they act against the promises the U.S. made to China. That is why they reluctantly disclose the details of their funding sources. Truly independent think tanks should not make suggestions by violating a country's sovereignty.